more than 120,000 people are now estimated to have been displaced in that country since the airstrike started on March 26, as of this uh, past Saturday. In Abyan, more than 1,700 displaced families are living temporarily in schools, in host communities, and with families or relatives. The Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs reports that the conflict has made it hard for people to get food. For example, in Aden, flour was not available in the local market, and all bakeries have now closed down. Landlines and cell phone networks are no longer working in some areas. In Aden, Abyan, Al Dale, people in Aden and, and Al Mukalla have experienced prolonged power outages last, lasting up to 12 hours. Humanitarian partners are providing assistance, including water tanks, water trucking. Rehab of or rehabilitation of water and sanitation facilities and medical clinics and stand ready to provide more as soon as roads are reopened. Uh, as far as uh, Yemen goes, I think as, as he said in, uh, in, in Doha, as we've said here, that there needs to be uh, a halt to the military activities so the humanitarian aid can, can go through. I think we're seeing a very uh, a, a situation, uh, re especially regarding food, the availability of food, uh, which is growing uh, increasingly concerned uh, to us. Uh, Yemen is a country that is intensely dependent on, um, on food imports, and it's important that uh, all the parties involved in this current uh, situation uh, allow the free access of, of food. Are. Uh, on the same subject today, Médecins Sans Frontières uh, said that uh, some medicine supplies are stranded in Dubai because the authorities did not allow them to uh, be shipped to Sana'a. Mm -hmm. One aircraft landed in Sana'a, mm -hmm. but uh, some of the medicine was prevented. Uh, there, is, there are warnings coming from Sana'a today about famine striking some areas, shortage of water, shortage of food, shortage of floor. Also, the, the, uh, it seems the Saudis are targeting the petrol stations, which denying people or depriving them of fuel, even to transport sure, or to flee. Uh, question mark. The question here is, what is the United Nations doing to alleviate the suffering, number one? Number two, one call for ceasefire is not enough as it looks. There we are, uh, as you said, as you mentioned last week, it is a disaster in the making. Uh, what can... Sure. I mean, I think uh, I'll look into the specific MSF report you mentioned. Uh, it's not just MSF that has been uh, highlighting uh, the issues of of lack of food and water. I think it's something I just mentioned at the top of this, uh, at the top of this briefing. Uh, given the limited uh, resources and the continuing conflict, there is uh, humanitarian aid that is going in. I think we flagged uh, last week uh, a UNICEF uh, shipment. Our colleagues at the ICRC are able to get things in very sporadically. Uh, we have our colleagues on the ground are trying to do what they can depend given the um, the current uh, the current humanitarian uh, situation we're providing uh, uh, water tanks water trucking rehabilitation and sanitation facilities it's very challenging it's uh, it's an active violent uh, zone where people are shooting and bombing and and, and all of all of that um, Obviously, as, as the Secretary General said again, the, there needs to be cessation of hostilities, not only for the political, you know, for, for the humanitarian uh, aid to be able to, to get in. I think as in any conflict, it is incumbent on all the parties involved uh, not to target schools, not to target hospital or civilian, uh, civilian infrastructure. Uh, the the uh, chance uh, for people to flee the conflict zone are very limited as it looks. Uh, this, is why I think this is why we need to see a cessation of hostilities. 